We are live. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Victoria L. And uh, we have somebody new uh, down there at the bottom of me, I think, uh, with a new brand new attitude. Uh-huh. We got Miss Tanya T. Uh-huh. That's you. Say hello to the people. Hey, people. Looking all grown and stuff, but you're walking in the third. Okay. And then we have next to her, Miss Maggie. Say hello. Hey, family. family. And then Maggie, who do we have this amazing couple? Please tell us who they are. Yes, today on the show with us, The Waiting Game Chapter 35, we have Mark and Mildred Clark. I have gotten to know Mildred through a transformation process I am going through, and she has been a great leader and guide. And through getting to know her, I got to know of her marriage and relationship and the ministry that her and her husband have. And I was like, oh, y'all sound like an awesome couple to have on the show as we're learning gleaming wisdom and um our audience is out here as well and they want to know so we have mark and mildred clark with us today and so we would love if you would introduce yourselves and give us a little background information about you all ah good evening it's we're, we're so glad to be here with you we're mark and mildred clark and uh we represent love alive uh and love alive is uh, organization that seeks to enhance relationships. We work mm -hmm. toward developing healthy relationships, mm -hmm. uh, improving relationships, all type of relationship, spousal, friend, family, uh, co-workers, because the same things needed to have a good relationship are needed in all relationships. So we're about better relationship building. And we're glad you invited us this evening. So my question is, what do y'all really want to know about us? Uh, <laughs> first of all, I want to know Everybody. how long have y'all been together and how did you all meet? Tell us, mm -hmm. take us all the way back. All the way back. Woo, that's a long time. That's a long back. time, 43 years ago. Okay. <laughs> well, really more than that. Um, we have been together. It will be 43 years on July 28th of this year. Woo, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, how did we meet? We met on several occasions. Uh, mm -hmm. One time, he remembers me. I don't remember him. <laughs> uh, we were, <laughs> we were, we were small kids, and our parents had a mutual acquaintance that he would be at the house and I would be at the house. But like I said, I don't remember him. But he remembers me running around and playing and all that different kind of stuff. I remember a group of kids running around and playing. Who they were, I don't know. We were just all together and playing, you know, but I had a mutual friend uh, that he knew too. Uh, then we met again. It was, we were, his mother was a Bible school. No, not his mother. The uh, mutual acquaintance of our parents was a what, Bible school teacher. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit. And uh, that's when I realized who he was and he did not give me a good impression at that moment because there was a que <laughs> there was a question asked during that Bible study of uh, how many people did Jesus feed with the two fish and five loaves of bread? Right. So I raised my hand because I knew the answer. I said 5,000. And he was sitting over across from me and he looked up like this and he said, it was 4,000. And I said, hmm, okay. So actually both answers were correct. So, you know, but and then we met again uh, at his father's church and I, you know, still did not put all the pieces together. His father was the bishop of the church and I ended up being there. So I joined the church and we connected that way and became friends. So is there an age difference or are y'all the same age? We're the same. Okay. Right. Same okay. age. Okay. okay. How old are y'all? Y'all were kids. So it's because I got a couple of questions that'll come later about how um the what do you guys see the relationship and how has it evolved from y'all's in in the in us, our generation and your generation, but that's later. Um, so okay, so you guys met. And you said you don't remember him. You're not the first person that's come on here and said they don't remember. They, you're the, not the first woman that has said I don't, I don't remember him. He remembered me though, so that's a good thing, I guess. 
Um, but obviously he remember you enough to ask you to marry him. So I mean, <laughs> it was it was good enough. I mean, you know. Uh, but what's okay? So when did you guys start getting serious since you've known him so long? Serious. Um, or expressing well, interest. We we were expressing interest by the age of sixteen. Okay. Um, you know, so like I said, we became friends. I was a member of the choir he played. He's a keyboardist, mm -hmm. organist. So he was playing for the church, and every once in a while, I'd sit beside him and kind of act like I was, you know, you know, you make yourself available, like. <laughs> <laughs> You make yourself available, like, yeah. like uh, Naomi told Ruth, you know, go do what you need to do, you know, mm -hmm. without too much extra stuff. But yeah, I made myself <laughs> available to be seen. Okay. At the age of 16. So, right. right. Mark, were you already interested or did you have your eye on somebody else? Or what, what was this situation like? Well, um, I was interested. Uh, she was actually talking to someone else at the time she left that part out see uh, <laughs> but she making herself available mm -hmm. yeah i'm about to say but you, yeah i mean you dating but, a lot but we were friends so we would have conversations and and we became friends uh and at the time i was talking to someone else also uh but that didn't work out and uh so we start just being friends and then that evolved and in a couple of years you know Three years. Three years later, we decided to get married. <laughs> Wait. Y'all just went from friends to three years later. <laughs> <decided to get laughs> there's, some, there's some stuff in between there that we want to unpack. So we, we were friends. We were we, getting we to were know friends. each other. We were friends. And my take on that is, you know, you're friends. Even if you were, at least then, we, mm -hmm. just, we, did, we didn't do the, you know, the married stuff before you married. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, you know, yeah. I'm just trying to get into other stuff. So we were just friends and okay. we left room for the fact that even though we liked each other, we may not be meant for each other, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. we liked each other, we became friends. And like he said, it just really kind of evolved from that. Uh, um, well, uh, at the time when she was getting ready, she was, uh, thinking about joining the military, Air the Air Force. Oh. So she, she was going to join Air Force, and then I was going to do something different. So that's what we thought we were going to do. But if we got married, we would do something different. So we decided to get married. So we didn't go in those different paths. So we went in a path together. So did you ask her? What how did you come to this agreement that we want to get me right okay let me let me say this too in in the process of what i was saying about uh us we, we gave each other space to really discover who it is that you might feel more connected to okay know, spiritually you know uh soul wise you know because we believe that people connect spirit soul and body mm. and at that time i was very very um uh, dedicated to my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be in any relationship that God was not really putting his point, his stamp of approval on. Okay. So I get, I really gave him space to mm -hmm. make the, make that discovery, even though, because we were friends. So there was a group of people and he said he was interested, but he was also interested in other right. young right. ladies. Mm -hmm. that he right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. Whenever they would come in town, I would make myself disappear. You know, yeah. they would go out. They would do whatever, you know, they would go out, enjoy each other, whatever, yeah. go have okay. dinner, all that different kind of stuff. I went home with my mama. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, just to give him space to decide what it was that he wanted, because I felt like if, if God was in it, and I've mm -hmm. had, had people say, you better get him before he leave. I said, well, if, if he's meant for me, he's not going anywhere. Right. That's that amen. Right. So I just believe that. And I didn't put any pressure on him or anything. I was just busy being who I was. Mm -hmm. So 
Now, did you leave it open for others as well? Like when you said you made yourself available for him, you basically was open towards anybody coming or were you kind of just home? Open that if it was not him, then you know, it could have been it. Right. Okay. You know, as but as I was but I was not, but I was not just out there trying to get somebody to like me. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know? So I just believe that if if God was going, God was going to provide me with a, a person that was for me. Yes. And that was at 16, 17 years old. I just believe right. that. Oh, so wow. um, I didn't sweat it. it well, was- amen. <laughs> I mean, you had the courage to do that now. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back. Because right now we're looking like, wait, wait, wait. 16, couple of years, boom, married. Okay, for 40 years. So my question is, that was wonderful what you said about you gave them space to be like, look, you do whatever you do. We can still be friends, but you can still do what you do. And then if God wants us to be together, we'll be together. Um, that was ma- the main thing. So my thing is this, just because, so you guys met in church, right? Mm, or school. For friends, you know, yeah. Day, kid, yeah kids. Okay. So you met it when you, yeah, you said, he said she didn't know him. So he, I met when y'all was with kids. So you met when you were kids, then it, you know, it grew. And then all of a sudden you started getting connected in church and all these other things. Um, did you, when did your parents say like, okay, hmm, I think y'all, they starting to like each other. And, you know, cause at 16, they're not really trying to let you date nobody. Not at 16, not, not my 16, maybe somebody else's. That's why I was like, did your parents, were they like, oh, okay, that's fine. You, they trusted it. Okay. Um. For one thing, this was, yeah, 16 was when you, you could officially date, but this was a while ago. This is like four generations of people doing things ago, four, yeah. four whole periods. And at that particular time, when we came along, uh, number one, at 18, you were grown. At 18, you were out on your own and you really couldn't wait to be 18. You right. were working at 18, you moved out, you got a job, you got your own place. That was, and that was at 18. And that's what everybody did when we came along. Mm-hmm. Not 21, but 18. So the, the, the mindset of responsibility and maturity may have been a little different. Mm. So regardless whether or not you got married, you were dating, you were hooked up with anyone, when you became 18, you became independent as much as you could you know that's why she was headed to the air force mm-hmm. uh, i forget where i was headed i graduated high school at 17 and i know you know some people still do but mm-hmm. i was out of high school at 17 had a job at 18 had a job at you know and and so as far as our parents what were my parents uh and I was the youngest, so they had seen my siblings get married and whatever. But when I did, when I mentioned that I wanted to get married, they didn't have any objections, any concerns. And I think it's because perhaps they knew something about me and they knew something about her. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, when when my brothers got married, you know, that was a discussion. It, it didn't go that smoothly with their <laughs> selection. <laughs> and and they were a bit older so it mm-hmm. you know it was really based upon the temperament our our temperament and our character mm-hmm. who we were at the time mm-hmm. so no we didn't we didn't get any kickback from either of our parents even when i asked her mother for a hand there was there was no problems and, and mm-hmm. her brothers there was no problem now do y'all have children i was coming grown children Grown children. Okay, so yes, let me segue into that. Yes, please do. <laughs> grown children. Now, mm-hmm. are you, are your children married? I mean, they're grown adults, young adults. One are they of them. One of All them. of them. One. One of them. Okay. Our oldest son is not married yet, mm-hmm. but he's on his way to being. Okay. Um, he has a fiance. Mm -hmm. Uh, middle our second son which is our middle child is married and has two children and one on the way Mm -hmm. Uh, and our daughter who is the youngest is not married 
but she's you know she's wonderful so they're right around our age okay. oh he's about to say my oldest is 40 mm -hmm. my middle is 38 37 38 <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> and then my my daughter will soon be 30. Oh, uh -huh. so y'all look good for y'all age. You do. I'm like, y'all look really good. You and do. what would you coming into now how the world is now? Right. What would you say? I mean, to you, what were you telling your children as they began dating? I mean, did you still, because I know how you were saying four generations ago, you know, y'all were young in love. Um, y'all knew each other in the church. You had time to really watch each other grow over time in a sense, because I feel like we still, you know, still young minded in high school. You know mm -hmm. how I dated when I was, well, I didn't really date 16, 17, but I feel like, you know, you matured after 18. Even in college, I feel like even now I date different than how I date in college. Um, after having some experiences and things like that, you know, I feel like we grow over time. How have you, you know, put those experiences that you've experienced being married this long and instilled that in your um, young young adult children today? Like, what do you tell them now mm -hmm. as they're going out? You know, you have boys, so they're probably going out a little bit more than the. <laughs> The thirty old. Then the girl. <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, we we it's not so much that we tell them things. We try to like live and be an, mm -hmm. and be an example in front of them how to work things out. Right. And as our oldest son will, will will say, he he watched his parents wow. grow and mature into being parents and and who we are. So. It's a process every stage. So as we learn and as we gain insight, we pass it on in conversation to our mm -hmm. children. We don't, we never try to tell them what to do or what not. We've given them what we understand to be wise counsel and mm -hmm. consequence and understanding that you're responsible for your actions and your decisions. And these are consequence. So, we, we, we've kind of set it up like that. And from, and we've been doing this ministry for, hello. Since the 1980s. So they were, they were younger then and they, <laughs> they experienced, we would have sessions in our home. We would have workshops and they were around. So they understood that we were really getting just serious about how people relate relationships because we saw so many relationships fail. Mm. And, and so we mm. were concerned that something should be done, that, that something could be done to keep relationships from failing. And speaking mm. on that, you know, cause I remember at one point, and, and I don't want anybody to think that we hadn't gone through our ebbs and flows because we sure. had, you know, mm -hmm. but the, the reality of, the, of that is, is that when you, when you get married and I tell anybody, I said, the enemy always works in reverse. Mm -hmm. Before you marry somebody, everything just seems so wonderful and so sweet. And and not that it's not, you know, but he wants to make sure that, ooh, you get together with this one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But and, and I mean, get together in more ways than one because the temptation <laughs> was there. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, you know, yeah. but, and then when you get married, he does does everything in his power to tear it down. And it takes mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. consistent work Intentional. and intentionality. And when we say work, we're not talking about like a chore, but you have to put forth effort into a right. relationship in order to make it work, you know? And then um, taking into consideration, you know, a lot of times you go to church, there are more churches now that deal with relationships and marriages and stuff than it was when we were coming along because that wasn't even a conversation. You yeah. know, it was, it was, it was more or less, you know, just do, do, do what you're told, do what you're told pray, pray and submit and submit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. pray still, they're still saying the same thing. It is. Uh, yes. Because a lot of times they're not giving you tools to work out issues. Yeah. Uh, some, Amen. Of, some subjects they still mm -hmm. don't want to talk about, but 
we have always been open and available. We talk about everything. Everything. Uh, in, in earlier times when we would uh, mentor and, and work with couples, we would just lay it out on the table. If they want to understand some stuff, we would, we would use our relationship as an example. And not just couples, uh, you know, uh, Mark was talking about how we started and we would have gatherings in our home, you know, and most of those were young people that were much younger than we were. Uh, and we just have conversation about relationship. They were single, married, some of them, some of them engaged, but we would all sit and we would sit in our den full of people and just talk about relationship and answer questions to the best of our ability. So I have a question about, I have some more questions where Tanya was going with kids and how you were communicating. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I'm gonna jump subjects real quick. And you mentioned relationships take work and people often say they take work. Can you, instead of putting it in that bucket of work, what does work look like? What are actionable items for work when it comes to putting in work in a relationship? Yes. Okay. Let me, let me say, and this is a post that Mildred is working on, but it basically talked about things before you get married, some of the issues. Mm -hmm. And um, in our book, B, The Attitudes Stop for a like Strong, that. Healthy Marriage, <laughs> in mm -hmm. chapter nine, uh, there's a, the chapter is Divorce Proof. And we talk mm -hmm. about the seven things that we feel should be discussed on a first date. Not oh. yeah. When you're serious about someone. If mm -hmm. you're thinking about, this is a person perhaps I wanna pursue a relationship with. Uh, there are seven things that we think that you should go ahead and have conversation about. You don't have to make decisions, but we don't think that there should be serious things that you can't talk about when you meet someone that you want to have a future with. And oh. then you don't have to say, oh, I want to talk about these seven things because I'm looking, no. you know. But right. It's, it's just a process. <laughs> of getting that would be me. I'd be like, look, I need to look. Yeah, because then we, like, they yeah. say that. But they you, say, like, but you, you, do, want play, to, you yeah. do want to introduce these things and say, you mm -hmm. know, hey, yeah. what, what are your views on politics? Uh, you know. Oh, Lord. You know, okay. but, the, but those are things that you need to, to discuss. And we say politics, we actually added that one. Mm -hmm. Because during the years of Obama, I don't know if you all, you know, kept up with a whole lot of that, but there was- We a, did. Oh, I did. Okay. But during his second term, I think it was his second term, there was a woman who actually ran over her husband because her husband voted for Obama. Oh, white goodness. Man. Yes. And so we decided- I okay. Yes. There was, she literally ran over her whole husband, tried to, you know, take him out. But um, yeah, so we added that one because we figured that, okay, that must be really important to some people. So that needs to be well, added to the conversation. Let me give you the seven topics because they require the work. Okay. Uh, and, and we believe you should be willing to have a conversation. You don't have to force it, but you should be willing. And you should know this. You should know something about these seven things before you get married. The seven are food, family, finance, faith, which is religion, um, politics, sex, and social life. Hmm. Those are seven things that right. are extremely important because I can give you an instance where each one of those things were responsible for a divorce or, or a marriage breaking up. Just one. You, you know, they, you didn't have to violate all seven. So, and we understand that these are the things that make up life and to create a living with a family, career, social life and families, all these things will impact your relationship. Even though it's just the two of you, you, you have to deal with all of these things. And so they require a different approach because you're talking about two different people from two different places. They bring their own stuff. And so when we come together, we have to figure out how do we fit? How do we fit her stuff, her history of origin with my history of origin? We come from two different families, mm -hmm. two different kind of approach and backgrounds, yeah. but we love each other. Now, uh, in that same thing, talking about the work, 
and you'll hear a lot in popular conversation that love is not enough. And we try to we try to adjust that because love is enough, but love is not the work. Mm. Love does not mm. do the work. Love creates the foundation so the work can be done. And then the scripture tells us faith without mm -hmm. works is dead. And I think that applies to every area and every aspect of our lives. You you have the faith. Okay, my marriage is gonna work, but then what are you doing? Okay. What, what are you putting into it? You know, how are you nourishing? what you have with each other. Y'all both are saying things. I mean, I'm just like laughing to myself because I promise you, I just had this conversation, not even mm, uh, maybe an hour ago, a couple hours ago about that same thing about love is, is love enough and about, uh, you know, faith without works is dead. And then bringing that into a relationship. I'm just like, wow, this is ordained that you're saying that. <laughs> And I think um, that was seven great things. Now, let me ask you this. What if you find when you're figuring out those seven things that somebody is totally, I mean, does that mean that it has to be in conjunction with, in harmony with each other? Or does that mean like, are you okay with like discussion? You know what I mean? Like, are you just oh. like, okay, what do you well, feel? You have, you have to determine what the, what the deal breaker is because we can't tell right. you that. Okay. Um, right. But like, for instance, let's say uh, we said you talk about family. That involves children. Do I want children? Do mm -hmm. you want children? You know, how strong are we with this? Because if you don't want children and we get married, the possibility or probability of me changing your mind is slim to none. Mm -hmm. So that may be a deal breaker because if I want children and he didn't want children. We, should, we shouldn't get married. We shouldn't get married <laughs> because I'm not going to change his mind necessarily. Right. And the sooner I know that, the better. I don't need to kind of like think maybe that'll we can kick that down the road and then we invest in this relationship and then later on we bring it up and then we both will be hurt we both will be broken because we didn't you know we didn't work that out and we had the opportunity so um expectations all of those seven things involve expectation finance how are we going to handle the money are you a spender are you a saver uh, you know, are we going to combine the money? Are we are we going to take the money and buy a dream house? Are we going to save? All of that needs to be expressed and as as best as you can come to some agreement. Now, you will never just know how to come to agreement because that's what the relationship is about. And one of the things we try to get across to people that getting married is different than anything else you may do that doesn't involve getting married. Uh, we've had couples who have lived together uh, for, we had one couple, they lived together for 11 years. They had children. Then they decided to get married. They got divorced in less than two years. Oh, wow. What? And, and, and I can explain okay. why that happens, wow. but wow. living together and marriage is two different things. And you think it's not. Well, you know, we're a couple. We we agree. We it really is. And, and like I said, that's a whole nother discussion. But right. when you commit to the covenant of marriage, it involves some different responsibilities. If I'm not married to her, no matter how many kids we got, no matter no matter how much combined finances we have, if I decide I'm through, I can just get up and walk away. And that's mm -hmm. understood. But if I'm married to her, it's not that it's simple. A process. It's a process. And not only is it a process of us uh, being entangled, it's a process of our souls being entangled. So you don't just mm -hmm. get over it because you stood up somewhere and you went through this process and you said some words that you may not have understood. But those words were powerful whether you understood them or not and they created something that you said you would do. So all of that comes mm -hmm. into play when we decide to stay together and when we decide to break up. Hmm. <laughs> a lot to think about. <laughs> so a lot of wisdom and knowledge coming. I'm telling through. you, I'm like, what? what? I gotta think about that, I really do. Like I just, and and that Maggie will tell you like I'm very like somebody will say something I'm always into like self help books or like looking like looking up oh look at this 
you know, quote, look, look at this thing I read, da, 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 da. so now I got to get involved with the seven things. Yeah, I need to yeah. And then also, yeah. so, you know, uh, we know another couple that actually used this process and uh, had been dating for a while, had been dating this young lady for a while. And we mm -hmm. told them, we said, we, you need to have this conversation. And in the process of trying to have the conversation, the other one of the parties decided, I, I can't do this. So they could not handle the those seven things. Yeah. So, you know, and if you can't handle those seven things in a conversation, in a conversation <laughs> then to How me, it's a process of elimination. Yeah. And we won't be able to communicate when we get married because you mm -hmm. can't talk about just the simple things. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not talking, so, we're not combining finances. We're just talking, talking about, about expectations. How do you handle? Yeah. How do we handle? You know, we're not talking about sex. We're not. Maybe we're not having sex, but we're just talking about what are our preferences and expectations. You know, mm -hmm. uh, blended mm -hmm. families. All of these issues are crucial because I, I don't believe nobody who gets married intend not to be married. Uh, I've played at hundreds of, of weddings. I mean, just... I can't count how many weddings I've played at. And nobody there at that time expected, had the expectation that in six months, it was gonna be so bad and we wanna break up. Or in a year, we're gonna be broken up. Yeah. That's not what you think on that day. You're full of hope, you're full of expectations, and you believe that you can make it work. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is you can, but that's the work. That's the intentionality. Yeah. And that's what we, we try to help people kind of approach and deal with that. What's involved in the work? If you want to make it and you can make it, it was designed for you to make it. What does mm -hmm. that look like? You know. Let me ask you guys a question about, cause okay. And it's just me, cause I'm just basing it off of what you guys have said. So you have the two sons, one is engaged, one is married and, and sweet baby girl like me. I had two older brothers and then it's me. I'm in the baby girl. And um, we're all the baby girls. I'll yes, we are. Yeah. yeah, we are all on the call. We all baby girls. So, well, you know. You the well, you got yeah, some other baby kids. She was at some point, okay. <laughs> My dad got remarried. Had so, another late. Right, right. It's okay. This is, you just find happiness. So she, okay. So my thing is, is are you telling your like, is she excited about dating? Because I know at thirty, you know, when I was twenty four, of course, I ain't know nothing. I thought I did. Um, and at twenty four, I thought, Dad, I'm gonna be married with all this. I'm gonna get kissed and all sort of stuff. And now that I look back, I'm like, if I would have got married at twenty four, I'm sure I would be divorced. It's just, this just me because I'm learning myself, you know what I mean? And I didn't know, like, learning yourself is going all the time. It's not just me learning today. And then uh, you reaching all these goals of like 30, 35, they, then getting close to 40, you know, you're becoming different people. So, like, does your daughter ever say, like, is she excited about getting married? I mean, she has, and she, and you actually are just like our parents. Hello, Maggie, because our parents have been together 40 some years and 50 we, years. You know, you know what I'm saying? 40, 50 years. And it's like, hello. Like, you know what I mean? We're not married, which, okay, we're not, there's no rush. But I think that's very interesting that I'm like, okay, so what's, what does baby girl feel? Does she feel like, she, like, oh, is that, am I going to find somebody? Am I excited? Am I not? What does she feel? Um, one thing about that, and, and we had this conversation with the oldest because mm -hmm. the middle son got married. He decided. He that's mine. Like mine, my brother, the middle. <laughs> he jumped in. And he jumped in and immediately uh, understood the value of having us for a resource. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now the oldest is older. Mm -hmm. okay? He's 40. And mm -hmm. our conversations with him is that now you know that every, every round, every two years, three years, four years, five years, that you're not married, that your relationship is gonna look different. Who you marry and why you marry mm -hmm. won't be mm -hmm. the same. When you marry mm -hmm. at 40, it won't be the same reason you married at 25. Mm -hmm. And you have to be prepared to look at yourself through that lens and look at the person that you might wanna be with through that lens. 
not the romantic notions, right? The expectations of what we're going to be like because of what happened in the movies. No, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm mm -hmm. 55. What does that look like? Who am I looking to be with? And and you really have to make that assessment. Uh, uh, is this good for me at this age? Now, baby girl, yes, my baby girl. And she has observed a lot. And her focus, it has seemed in the last few years, is really to invest in herself. She understands that becoming her best whole self yes. is the best thing she can do to prepare for marriage. Because one thing she's understand that she don't want to marry someone who can't accept, respect, and treat her in the way that she understands she needs to be treated. It's not worth mm. it. So yes, I believe there's excitement, but there's also, you know, there's also, uh, uh, what, what word would you use? There's uh, the fact it's tempered by the wisdom that you're not confused by this romantic notion. I had a conversation with her on last night because we were talking about a reality show she was watching. And and I- Which one is the ultimatum? ultimatum. <laughs> it may have been. It was the, the ultimatum. Live, is it the one where they live together? Marry me or move on. Oh I yeah, either it's so many. Marry me now. Yeah, it is. And so yeah, we were so listening many. to the show. And so I asked a question like, I said, do you, I said, do you see things like this in your contemporaries? She said, no. Thank you. No, it's just, it's strictly no. um, whatever. Yeah, but, Entertainment. but you have to understand, and especially with you all and your contemporaries, as you look around, that's, that's the way a lot of people think. And mm -hmm. don't be discouraged because it seems like so many people think differently. It, you know, uh, uh, and in the show, they were talking about, well, you know, I think I'm starting to like you. <laughs> and they're, they're living together. They're sleeping together. I think I'm right. not, like you. Mm -hmm. not understanding how that has an impact on whether or not I can like you. Because if, and I know I'm talking a lot, but. And then, oh, no, 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 we take it. Mildred mentioned earlier about being concerned about connecting body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Are you all familiar with those aspects of yourself that you are a triune being? being? God created you, mm -hmm. he created a body, you're, you, you, you're a spirit, you live in a body, and you possess no. a soul. Yes. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I've been married so long, you know? <laughs> your, your, your spirit, he breathed into you the breath, you, the spirit. You live in a body, this clay stuff, this, 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 this shell, and you possess a soul. That soul is unique to that combination, your unique creation. So... In honoring those three aspects of yourself, you have to understand that when we when we come together, when I want to come together with a person, that we're going to hook up body, soul, spirit. Most times. Most times. Now, in our culture, we're encouraged to hook up body to body first, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. soul to soul first. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand that if we hook up body to body, that's such a strong attraction. That it will cloudy, it will cloud our ability mm -hmm. to see clearly our spirit selves and our soul selves. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we'll be trying to make it work because the body is so good, the sex and the physical is so good. We're addicted to it, we're tied to it, that we can't, the souls are just not compatible. But then we go through all this relationship drama because we hooked up body to body soul to soul and probably never spirit to spirit mm. the proper order is spirit to spirit soul to soul and then body to body if you do it any other way you may it may work out but you may have some added drama in that process mm -hmm. <laughs> received <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> so i mean received now we knew about that cloudiness because shout out to pastor mark who was on the show with his wife, uh, he talked about that sex clouds judgment and it clouds your, you can't think. Like, you know what I mean? So we we heard about that when we were growing up uh, in the teen ministry, so. 
Good yeah, to know yeah. you brought it back out there for us to hear. Because I don't know shows, to be honest, because Maggie told me about this new show called The Ultimatum. And I'm like, okay, this is where these people are forced to be like, look, you either going to marry me right now or you uh, we're going to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. So then they have this experience, I mean, experiment where they put them to different people and try to date other people. And then they come back and say, does it work? Does it not? Did they connect? Did they not? Yeah, the foolishness, really. And it's really strictly entertainment. That's all my only reason for watching is entertainment because I don't believe in that stuff. But you, know. but you know, we watch those shows to get to get the pulse of contemporary relationship in mind. True that. Uh, and, and we're just yeah. amazed. That's why I was talking with my daughter. Do people actually believe this? Now, she said some people don't, but some people do because yeah. they have different agendas. There are people mm-hmm. on that show with an agenda for celebrity because in America, yeah. the God is celebrity. And, mm. and so they're on the show not understanding that if I put myself in a position with this person, this attractive person. I put myself in a position, I may start getting attracted, attached to this person, even with the the script, the lights, the cameras and all the other stuff. I still may create something with this person. Mm. Now, how am I supposed to play with that Mm. and act like I'm looking for a serious connection for marriage? It doesn't work that way. (laughs) <laughs> but then as they renew these they're going to renew another season i'm sure it's coming back so <laughs> that's just i mean i think that that has had a um it's it's really given a perspective on relationships and how society has changed the whole format of relationships and taking it to where it used like you know different from people being married 40 50 years um because what you see on tv and hollywood if you will so uh, we try to stay strong about that, but you know, just it's it's tough. I think we're dealing with so many worldly issues now that wasn't necessarily in the forefront um, back then, you know. So we're trying. And like you said, at eighteen, you were considered grown. You were independent. You were right. on your well, own. Well, no, no, about that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people now we're babied, we're coddled, we're yes. you know, how yes. do we help you get to wherever and right we have that support or you have people that don't have support and they're like you don't need a man for anything and young yeah. women and ladies are hearing like you don't need a man you need to mm-hmm. go and get your education get your career so you don't have to rely on a man for anything and maybe it's not the fact of relying because they hear relying on a man and say i don't need a man versus right. let me be my best self right yeah. like you're investing yeah. in your daughter and say she's investing in herself and then let me partner and be a mate with somebody versus I don't need a man. I don't need to rely on anybody. And we get this mindset of we're independent, but that's not how we were made to be. We were made to be in relationships. We were made to be Amen. together as a unit. So it's very interesting, the mindset of even people younger than us, because now we're like, but like, oh, God, we don't, you know, it's like the twenties and babies, it's, it's, it's just different. It's a completely it different mindset. You're not old, but what I'm noticing <laughs> in conversation with younger people is that this mindset, it used to be at least five to 10 years difference in the way a group of people thought about things like this. 10 mm-hmm. years, that was like a generational thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking to my daughter, she says it's like three years. <laughs> right, it's true. It's, it's true. Like, you know, mm. people younger than her who may be 25 or 26, they don't think anything alike. She, she, I mean, right. nothing in common. So number <laughs> one, uh, we want to applaud you all for creating this forum yes. to support mm-hmm. yourself and your values and your goals, because this is how you make it. This is how you create community. Uh, and, and that's a whole nother topic because we're big on community and tribe. But mm-hmm. what you all are doing is mm-hmm. what you should do to, to create the community that you want to exist. And it will happen. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And with it. that reality, I was going to say too, you know, right now i'm sorry i had to step out for no, a no, no, no. Get it out. but right now i know i missed a little bit i'm sorry guys but <laughs> i came back in on y'all talking about the reality tv and i'm just like you know different from back then i feel like we got more temptation more options like you know i could talk to somebody out the country 
and they could be telling me everything you yeah. know that I want to hear even if we have these tough conversations and I feel like uh back then you know you pretty much your option was kind of like who's in your circle who you ran with you meet people where wherever you casually go and I feel like I'm still it, it, me personally I'm still like that and I feel like so many mm. people think that they could okay well she don't do this then I could get you know somebody else who is mm-hmm. gonna do that or mm-hmm. you know and I'm always feeling like am I compromising my feelings or am I being open enough and you know I've told myself because I'm a single mom I have a son and and now I'm starting to realize you know my husband I want my husband to be present so I know you know, long distance and meeting somebody. Could I meet somebody long distance? Yes. Yes. But, but you know, I've, I've grown to say, you know, I want my husband to be present because I want, you know, I'm present for my son. I want my husband to be present for me and to be present for my son too. You know, I don't want, you know, I want him to be God fearing, but I, I do want him to be present. So I've come to realize that, you know, my interactions with people, I feel like we're bubbly, we're open, and people are like, oh, we'll laugh, have a good time, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, I ain't trying to have that 90 day oh, yeah. fiance. Fiance. I, <laughs> I love 90 day fiance. Tanya, you brought up the thing about, yeah, in, in times past, we didn't have as many distractions. I won't call them mm-hmm. options, I'll call them distractions. Mm-hmm. And in time past, we had a different mindset. Now, in time past, we would never date someone long distance or remotely unless we were trying to get married so somebody could get in the country. You know, you know, 90 that fiance. It was, it was a visa <laughs> arrangement. Yeah, that happened a lot. That 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 was the only reason yeah. why we were remotely. But oh wow. And, but yeah, it had to be present. Matter of fact, when the internet and uh, internet dating became a big deal. We like we couldn't believe that people would actually would actually think about and we know we have dealt with couples we know couples we have mentored couples they met on the internet yeah so I, I don't disqualify mm-hmm. the format because a lot some of, good, of them work. some of them work yeah but just where we we come from we would mm-hmm. never feel comfortable <laughs> getting to know someone right we I could at least be in the room and feel your energy and yeah, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying mm-hmm. so that was important to us, but we understand it's different. So you have more options and you have more distractions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the best word, distractions. I don't think it's ever been said that way because when we talk, we like, yeah, they just got so many options. Options, <laughs> but it's and I'm talking about the 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 uh, maturity and the development. Our middle son, mm-hmm. you know, now at 18. I promise you, we didn't even have any questions of whether or not we were grown. Nope. Mm-hmm. It was not. And not only did we not have questions, <laughs> everybody else, socially, you're grown. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, when our son, he was, what, 23, 24, he was in school, mm-hmm. uh, Lauren. Mm-hmm. And he was, he had the option to stay on campus. No, he had the option, actually had the option to go out of state. Out of state. Yeah. Uh-huh. But he <laughs> said he said, couldn't do it. He said, Mama, uh-huh. he said, I can't go anywhere. He said, because if I do, I know I ain't going to do that. Okay. At least he knows himself. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. And then there's this there's this information that has come out in the in the recent years that uh tell about the emerging adults, the age. Oh yes. Um I I I I'll call myself an educator always, but when I was teaching in the schools, I went to a workshop one time and they talked about, you know, the different ages and stages of life. And, you know, we've always heard about the, the adolescence, which is from like what, from 15, 12, 13, 12, 13, 21. Different now, yeah. Um, so it's still, the adolescence part is still in that age range. Mm-hmm. And then from 21 to 28 the... is what they call emerging adults. Oh, wow. That hmm. you may not have developed the proper brain patterns 
to make adult decisions, even at age 28. I, I see how that kind of makes Me too. <laughs> a lot of sense. Me too. Because we, our parents, they just, you know, they weren't just being honest. You know, I love my parents. You know, we love our parents, but I don't think they were like 18, you got to go or 18, grow up. You know, that kind of thing. It wasn't, it wasn't at all that, like, if anything, it was a revolving door. Like, you know, whenever I come home, I'll go back to your mom, you know, because it didn't, I didn't move out until quite some time, you know, mm, very recent, actually, <laughs> you know, not, you know, years, but um, I think it wasn't like back in the day, like my mom or my dad, because when they knew when they left, they told us when they left and went to college, they weren't going back home. Mm -hmm. It was, it wasn't like, oh, you come home on, you know, do this, no, go, you do your own no, thing. We, we never, we never just, we didn't rush our children away. Right, right, right. But there were signals and, and things <laughs> to let you know oh, when it is time. <laughs> when it was time, as my mama said, to you know, to loose release that apron string or whatever, <laughs> you know. So there was one that I had to just, you know, I just had to kind of talk to him, and I was combing his hair at the time, and Mama was sweet about it. But Mama had to tell him, so you know, like the, you know, when eagles have babies, mm -hmm. what they do when it's time for them to fly is they push, push them out, out of the nest mm -hmm. <laughs> to see if you can. Fly. So it was time for him to fly. Well, let me let me tell it the way you know she's being nice. At the time we were we were moving, we were about to buy a house, and all of all of our children were still at home. So we were moving, mm. and I don't know how old he was, but he was twenty something. And she just told him, "You can't come." <laughs> I didn't say that. We won't for you in this house. You <laughs> still real? You got to, you go. got to get up out of here. Okay. I mean, it, was, it, it wasn't a harsh thing, but and, and it wasn't. but it was like you know this is a good opportunity for you to seek out that independence. <laughs> you know, it's a good opportunity, and he did. Mm -hmm. He did. And we we didn't just close the door though. No, and <laughs> actually, actually. <laughs> we bought another house and he was able to stay in the house we were in so it wasn't like he was just kicked out someplace mm -hmm. you know he, he just couldn't come <laughs> come to the new place okay. but you know they still come over for meals sure. they come over for resources so and we're big <laughs> we're big on extended family we're big mm -hmm. on community and tribe so you're never a set aside from the group but we do promote independence in all areas. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this last question. Last question. So, because you keep, you guys said you're big on community and tribe. Um, so, the, mm, I guess I can't say everyone, uh, but a lot of people now, we don't come from the same place. Uh, our community and tribes are totally different. Do you think that um, what are the, I know it can probably work or it could work, but like how, what is your opinion about people coming together from two totally different tribes in, com you know, in community, I should say. Is that- Or the, what they mean? call it, what is the word, because pedigree? Yep, sorry. Just, yeah, okay. pedigree. Uh, you want to answer that? Uh, well, yes, that, that, that used to be a big deal. We you came know. from two tribes. We came from two different <laughs> groups. Um, uh, I came from a two-parent home. Mm -hmm. She came nuclear from family. a nuclear family. She came from a single-parent single parent home. home. Uh, and backgrounds were a little different. But the most important thing, and that's why we have to really think about our individual wholeness, is that when we decide to come together, we are challenged to make a new thing with just the mm. two of us. But now, also, uh -huh. but also mm. in, in being different as we were, uh, we made sure that we got to know each other's families too. Mm -hmm. That's part of the seven. That's part of the seven <laughs> topics, family. And when we say yeah. family, we're not just talking about how many kids we want. We're talking about yeah. how do we bring these two families together? Now we we don't have any mother-in-law stories. You know, a lot of you got a lot of mother-in-law mm -hmm. jokes. Mm -hmm. We never had that issue. We have both. We both had great in-laws, mm -hmm. so we never had that problem. 
But if we had that problem, then that would be an intentional thing to mm -hmm. deal with. And we would have to come to agreement. We have counseled people that have those issues and it can be a deal breaker. It can be a marriage breaker mm -hmm. because you don't understand how to deal with it. You know, uh, I had a, I had one young man and he became the man in his household of his mother and his sister. His father was gone. So for, you know, 15, 20 years, he was the man of the house. But when he got married, he moved out. But his mom still considered her, him, as the go-to. And mm -hmm. so when his mom would call, he would just up and go. He, he didn't think about it because that's what he's always yeah, done. Man. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I had to give him some sens sensitivity training on how to respect his wife. Mm -hmm. and how to respect his mom, how to learn to respond to his mom based upon what his wife agrees to, you know, and you know, right. mom, some mom said, well, you know, I don't care who you marry. You always be my son, you know, right. no, no. Uh, yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. whatever. But your primary interest should be with the person you make the vows with and the commitment. So you, but all of that's, that's part of the work. Mm -hmm. How do we come to agreement on how to deal with our in-laws and we have different backgrounds and we have, right. and, and even though we come together and agree and we come to different places, we've got to unpack that stuff because that's my history of origin. That's all I know. Sometimes we use the analogy, uh, we ask the question, do you put sugar or salt on your grits? Right. Oh, no sugar, salt, <laughs> right? Hello, salt. No, nobody here. Little salt. Tanya, what you put on your grits? I say salt, but a no, we salt, salt girls. girls. But, but right, we put salt in the water. Uh huh. No, no sugar. So, so now imagine putting <laughs> I know. Up somebody and they put sugar on their grits. There's so many people who do it. Uh huh. But this is your person. This is the we can't be together. To live with. What about to say, uh, we're cooking the then. I cook yeah. my own. You cook your own. We do. Make it goes, your it own. Goes deeper, nah. it goes deeper than a taste preference. <laughs> if I come from a family and they put sugar on the grits, I think that's right, and I think my mama, mm -hmm. is right. your mama, is wrong. That's right. the problem. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking it. Right. Your mama don't don't know your what. Your mama crazy. Do. Uh huh. Your mama crazy. You put your <laughs> that's not a good way to view my mother-in-law because I'm thinking about you too. <laughs> right. I let that slip out my mouth. I just created some problems. Yeah. That's over food. Salt right. and sugar and grits. It shouldn't be that crucial, but it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we just make some grits and then I'll I'll give you sugar on the side. You can put the sugar on your grits and then I have the, the grits I want on my side. And see, and that's what you do when two becomes one. You start making your own agreements. Boom. What's right for us may not have been right for our parents or someone else. And I got to not mm -hmm. concern myself with other people. I need to concern myself with our preferences. We're going to make a new thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to create a new tribe. New. We're going to create a new community. And we're going to let it reflect our philosophy our values, everything. And the people who don't reflect that, we're not gonna waste any time on them. And that's why you that's what you have to do on social media. You got people in your in your group, and if mm -hmm. they're not like you, cut them off. Cut them off. <laughs> now, now it's not that we don't entertain don't a difference of opinion, but I, I can always get a difference of opinion. Exactly. But I don't need I don't need someone who's mm opposed to who I am taking up space and energy in my mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. I don't have to allow that. Cut it off. Protect your space, guard mm -hmm. your people, create boundaries to make mm -hmm. your life whole and wholesome and never apologize for that. Right. Maggie, they already done told us what they yeah, need. I know. I was he about just to ended say, with the nugget. We yeah. ended with the nugget. Right. They started and ended with the nugget. Them. We always ask, what is one word or encouragement or whatever you would want to leave with the audience? But I think that sums it up you perfectly. Did you Protect did it. You your did space, it. your boundaries. Your oh, tribe oh, is where God. you belong. Work on your wholeness. So, 
Yeah. But I do, Victoria, I do want them to tell us where we, that we can get their book and what's Absolutely. the name of the book Hello. and also how we can connect yeah. with your ministry. Yes, please, because I need some. Thank you. Okay, this this is the book and the title of it is B. Okay, let me okay. put it in. And it says it's at the here. bottom, Embracing Attitudes for a Strong Health and Marriage, but this book can uh, uh, be used by anybody, whether you're single, married, separated, divorced, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something in here for everybody. Uh, so that's on Amazon. We I'm about to say, please, Amazon Prime. Right. Mm -hmm. We are. <laughs> we can be found on Facebook, Instagram, under Love Alive. Uh, we have a Facebook group called the Love Alive Tribe. If you mm -hmm. want to join us there, uh, oh, what else we got? Yeah. We're oh. on. We're on um, Twitter. <laughs> under, <laughs> We're on Twitter under Love Alive One. And I think that's about it. Uh, and talking about the tribe, this this project, this book, uh, this that's was right. a tribe project. Uh, our son, wow. the middle son, he's a, he's a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. He designed the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, the young lady in the in the pose, that's our daughter. She's a movie okay. specialist, and uh, she got a friend of hers, and they, and they created that, and they also created that on the back. Um, so you had your kids are artistic. That's what I'm talking about. And and Mildred, she designed the book, the layout, and she wrote all of that. You know, we we had discussions, and she put all of that into this, uh, the layout. She's. Um, She's a layout and design person, so she was able to do all of that. Um, our son, he he's a photographer. The oldest. The oldest. He didn't do any photography. He didn't do the photography, know. but <laughs> if you if you go to uh, YouTube, we have mm -hmm. a video. Oh yes, uh, we are on YouTube. We're on YouTube. You uh, mm -hmm. we have a video for the book. He produced the video. Yeah. What's your YouTube tag? Because you know, I post the I post this video on YouTube whenever we have a show, so I can put you guys in the description. Uh, can I send that to you? Yes, you can send. I'm about to say, I'm sorry, you can send. It. No, I have to, no, I I will ha I'm gonna have to. And send all the Facebook ahead. information. So when you post it, all of that stuff. When you see it, then I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna. Yes, always. And I thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, I never know what we're going to hear when we get these cu these couples, because we've had all kinds of couples. Um, and they've all been wonderful. And everybody's story has been amazing. And even I love the fact that now I have some things I got to think about. And I have some exercises I have to do. I mean, that's what it really is about self-growth. So, and finding that person to figure out this seven, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So uh, I think I really appreciate you guys. Maggie, you did it again. Thank you for bringing us to the clocks. And um, we're going to, I'm going to do the Love Live Tribe. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go join that group if I can, you know. So uh, I thank you guys so much. Uh, we love you. Uh, thank you uh, for visiting everybody who's watching. We're going to repost it. You know, everybody, you know what to do. Go to YouTube, follow us, go on Instagram. Go on Twitter, go all those places because now we're in social media land. That's just how people hear our voices. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you guys so much. And I think we're done. So everybody have a great weekend. Um, enjoy this hot weather when you can um, because it's going to rain at some point. So enjoy it. And thank you guys so much for visiting The Waiting Game, Chapter 35. You thank guys you for inviting us. We appreciate it. Of course, of course. Thank you so much.